TSERA is an acronym that stands for Knowledgeable Service Robots for Aging. The project is designed to implement the, the use in the home of a small robot that can facilitate all things that a human needs to get along in the world, particularly if the human is showing some signs of disability associated with aging. I'm Jim Jola. I've been a professor of psychology here at the University of Kansas since 1972. The aging population is increasing enormously. We get a, a much larger percentage of the population age 65 or older and 85 or older, and about half the people over 85 are showing definite signs of dementia. So this is a large segment of our population that's increasing. Now the robot is designed to be a personal assistant, okay? And one of the first things that it'll have to do is to track and follow the human and be available to it. So it's being trained to recognize an, a certain individual and to be constantly at hand as an aid to communication, as an aid to uh, reminding people of things they need to do, like taking their medicine or having a drink of water, um, and, and also as a communications link, an immediate communications link with uh, medical personnel or, or family members in, in case the uh, user needs assistance. Uh, the robot is very small. It's about two and a half feet tall. Uh, we've, we've purchased it from a company in France called Aldebaran uh, and the robot itself is called Now. And the reason we chose this robot is because, first of all, it's programmable and it's completely autonomous. It doesn't need any outside control, although it can be linked uh, with uh, computer systems of various sorts and sensor systems in the person's home. But also it has some uh, minimal linguistic capability in, in multiple languages so that as soon as it comes out of the box, It'll, in fact, un unravel and stretch itself and say, ah, oh, that was tight in there. And so it does speak, and, it, and the language capabilities are programmable so that it, it immediately behaves as if it is a communication device, an intelligent robot. Well, I'm working with two PhD students at the uh, Eindhoven University of Technology. One is involved mainly in um, the aspects of navigation, that is, walking around a room, um, avoiding obstacles, being at a, a socially acceptable distance from the human. People don't like robots to be in their face. Okay, there's an, actually an acceptable social distance both for communicating with people and with robots. Um, for detecting gaze, uh, the important aspect here is for the robot to know what you're attending to. If you're attending to the robot, you look at the robot, the robot knows that, and the robot returns the gaze and is ready to communicate. If you're looking at something else, the robot tries to identify what it is you're looking at by interpreting the direction of your gaze. In the robot's case, when you address it, you have some intention. You want a glass of water, you want to call your son, uh, you want to send in a medical record, you want to be reminded of what medicine you're supposed to take. That's an idea in your head, you speak it. If the robot understands it and it acts appropriately, then you have a successful communication. You know, if a person does anything unusual, like oversleep, or stay too long in the bathroom, or fall down, or something like that, the robot will be attentive to these unusual aspects of a person's behavior and actually form inquiries, and if necessary, interventions to call attention to the fact that a person's having a problem. We will actually install this robot in a couple of test environments within a year. These will be in hospital situations, nursing home situations, and eventually in the home. As far as its general availability, I'd say we're about five years away.